Aizen, when and how did Ifri disappear exactly? And how did you two meet in the first place? You know, you ask an awful lot of questions about us. What? I don't mean to pry, really. Perhaps it's a habit I picked up from my work. Drat, it seems I've been digging too hard. No matter. Ifrid vanished about a year ago. <sighs> he agreed to fight a duel against someone, and secretly left to meet his opponent. Once we figured out what was happening, we rushed to the scene. But all we found was the aftermath of a fight, and a pendulum. Was Zavid his opponent? Given his choice of weapon and his ability to fight, I'd say it's likely. What I don't get is why Ifrid would end up captured and imprisoned by the Abbey after a fight with a stray Moloch. The Abbey had him prisoner? On their island. Until an exorcist named Melchior took him away, that is. What? Lord Melchior did? The Abbey would have captured Ifrid about a year ago. Surely it must have caused quite a stir. I, I was simply patrolling. I wasn't involved in any such operations. Oh. But I do remember that we suffered a great number of casualties around that time. I never heard why, and when I went to investigate, I found no records of any major deployment. And then I was ordered to cease any such investigation by Lord Melchior. That's fishy. He wanted to hide something, clearly. And I think I'm starting to get a picture of what it was. And... it involves the Abbey? Eifried. So, this is Von Eifried. Eisen, it's good to see you again. So you're alive. You could have sent a letter. <laughs> when have you ever written a letter to another man? <laughs> True. Aside from my little brother, not even once. Your brother? Ah, yes. You told me that once. <laughs> Eisen, why? I've got no brother. Enough of your tricks! <laughs> Thanks for luring them out! I owe you one! Zavid. Now come on out, you old coot! Lord Melchior. Breaking through my double illusion. Impressive. I'm making a point not to fall for the same tricks twice. I shouldn't have let you get away last time. I won't make that mistake again. Why am I here? Her consciousness has returned, so that is its power. <laughs> he turned her into a demon. What? This can't be happening. <laughs> The chain reaction. Your Reaper's curse is quite the dreadful affliction, isn't it? Don't you run away! Heads up! Wyvern's coming! Why would an exorcist create a demon? Hey, worry 
about that later. We've got damn dragons to take care of. Like you got caught in your own trap, old man. Oh, are you sure about that? What the? I'll take care of the last one. Jump in and kill without a second thought. Is that your creed? Marvelous. Your Siegfried is just the power I've been looking for. What? My work here is done. The hell did you do? Wait, damn you! Follow them! Where the hell did they go? Find them. They can't have gotten far.
You sure got some speedy legs for an old fart. I'm glad to see you're okay, Zavid. It's not me that I'm worried about. Melchior was highly interested in your weapon. And yet he didn't steal it. Surely a legate like him could snatch it if he wanted to. Why bother stealing it? When you can just copy its hidden formula. Some arts can decipher the workings of other arts in a split second. And guess what Melchior's specialty is? As he left, he said, My work here is done. The Abbey must have some use for that unknown art. Who knows what? After all, they brought it here from another continent. <laughs> then we'll find out what they're after and crush it to dust. Let me ask you just one question. Why do you have Siegfried? I'm counting on you, he said. Back when I served the Exorcists. They sent me on a mission to capture Eifried. Savid, you were once their slave? Yeah. My mind was under the influence of Inominat's domain. But when Eifried aimed this baby at me, one shot was all it took to open my eyes. The fight we had after that was one for the books. <laughs> you might have been a human, but that guy was a beast. Put a song in my soul. But then Melchior had to jump in and spirit Eifried away with one of his damned illusions. That old bastard! Playing tricks with people's minds. But why'd he grab Eifried and not Siegfried when he had the chance? He probably didn't know at the time that this guy was the real prize he was after. But Eifried knew. Right before he was taken, he distracted Melchior long enough to hand Siegfried over to me. <sighs> well, that's all I know. Whether you believe me or not, is up to you. Got it. We're done here. Huh? That was easy. Eifried only says I'm counting on you to people he trusts. Is that so? So, what are you gonna do now? Gonna keep looking for Eifried. Still gotta give this back and settle our score. I doubt you have much time left to get that done. I'd 
I'd hazard a guess that until now, Melchior was unaware what Siegfried could really do. In other words, he and the exorcists weren't able to interrogate anything out of their captive. And now that Eifried's no longer needed, I see no reason for them to keep him alive. <sighs> you think I don't know that? If you really want to save Eifried, you probably ought to team up with us. Nope. No can do. Why not? You lot will do anything to achieve your goals. Even kill. <gasps> Sorry, I'm a fighter, not a killer. I won't steal a single life. That's just my creed. And I've got no intention of changing our pirate creed either. Aizen and Zavid have their own creeds. They both have such strong principles, even though they're so different. Just like humans. Well, that was sure something. Melchior and his illusions are cheats. There's no cheating in combat. What I meant is that they were awfully dirty tricks for an upstanding exorcist. And the illusions seemed so real. Had that gone on any longer, I wouldn't have been able to tell what was real and what was fake. If it can't be distinguished from reality, perhaps one could live a happier life within the illusion. Hmm. That sort of happiness can rot. You think so? But by using illusions, you can defeat an opponent without causing them any physical harm. Oh, how humane. Wow, the Abbey is so great. Lord Melchior is an exemplary man who has served Lord Artorias since before the Abbey's founding. He's done everything from logistical planning, to defense strategy, and even political negotiations. He shows the utmost concern, even for his opponents, so... He turned a friendly Moloch into a dragon. Th that was... Physical wounds can heal. Emotional wounds never fully fade. Yeah, but... Don't lose heart, Eleanor. Foul play is foul play, but you're talking to a demon and a witch. Who can judge? I appreciate that you're trying to console me, but as an exorcist, I cannot accept this. I thought I smelled someone pondering. What's on your mind, Lafayette? I know Siegfried comes from another continent and all, but do you know anything else about it, Ropero? Nope, can't say I do. All I care about are swords. That contraption doesn't interest me much. I suppose that makes sense. But it looked real powerful. Just guessing based on how we saw Zavid use it, I'd say it amplifies his power somehow. An amplifier. It's true that he seemed to get stronger when he fired it at himself. Yeah, and it gave that dying legendary wyvern enough strength to escape. But wasn't it also what he used to dispel Melchior's illusions back there? That was also amplification. The Malachim are the source of his arts. The relic pushed them past their limits and... kablooey. Suffice it to say, it can be used both offensively and defensively. It must be very hard to master. More important is what the Abbey plans to do with it. Not that I really care. Um, Laffy said? May I ask you something? What is it? The girl with the umbrella from Lord Melchior's illusion. What is her connection to Aizen? I don't think he'd answer if I asked him myself. I don't know. I was wondering about her as well. She was pretty, wasn't she? Oh, so you like a girl who's cute, but with a bit of sophistication. Really? I thought his type was more like Vel- Ah! Uh, shh! What's going on? We 
were discussing a delicate topic. Muffy sets first crush, if you must know. Oh. No, we weren't. We were just talking about the Umbrella Girl from the Illusion. The Umbrella Girl. That illusion made Aizen hesitate. She must be really important to him. Indeed. It must be a deep, naughty relationship. Come on, now. Like, a wife he wants to leave, but he can never let go. Or a lover from whom he can't move on. No, that's too wild. And she's too young. Yeah, it's not that. What's more likely for a self-serving pirate is... A daughter from a woman who only knows him by a fake name. Perhaps one whom he cast aside, or who cast him aside! And maybe she was somebody he couldn't marry for some reason. But when she died, he raised her daughter for her. He had been friends with her since they were children. But they only realized their true feelings after they had been married to someone else! Is this their idea of romance? In any case, beware of girls, Luffy said. Right. This big storm came and swept me out to a class 4 island, and let me tell you, it's as bad as the rumors make it sound. I wanted to just wait it out in a shipyard somewhere, but then, the water turned all gooey. Then I had these jellyfish things coming onto the deck, and before I knew it, slugs were swimming around in the damn ocean. Wouldn't the salt in seawater mess up a slug? Yeah, that's what I thought too, but these weren't no sea slugs neither. It was scary. I'll tell you that much. You want my advice? Stay the hell away from that island altogether. But if you do go, watch out for that gooey stuff. What did that pirate mean by class four? I've never heard of that. It's a classification the Abbey uses to help inform their strategy, an estimation of how well they've been able to manage the demon outbreak in an area. Administrative zone classes 1 through 3 have been assigned a suitable contingent of exorcists to guarantee the population's safety. 
So, Class 4 administrative zones are ones that are still unsafe? In a perfect world, the entire kingdom would be protected, but there's just not enough manpower to go around. The Abbey doesn't send exorcists to remote areas in far-off islands. Instead, they avoid casualties by making those areas off-limits. But that pirate mentioned he'd come close to an island. Are those policies actually enforced? They send out an official notice to stay away, and that's all. It's not like they could blockade every tiny remote island out there. So you're free to dive into the deep end if you want, but no one will come to your rescue. Hope you know how to swim. If they could keep the demons in check, they wouldn't have to tell people to stay clear. Frankly, I think the Abbey just doesn't want to go near places like that. In other words, these are dangerous places that the Abbey has washed their hands of. Makes you wonder how much they can administrate these places when they're not willing to get their hands dirty. Are there many Class IV administrative zones? I've heard of ten such regions in my time working as an inspector for the Abbey. But I'm afraid I couldn't tell you their exact locations or their current status. If the Abbey abandoned this island, it's probably safe to assume that it's getting to be pretty dangerous. If we go there, we're gonna want to be prepared. First mate! You're all right! Sorry to worry you. And the captain? It turned out to be a fake. But now I know the real one's still alive somewhere. Well, of course he is. Not that he has a lot of time left. What do you mean? Calm down. I'll explain later. Aizen! Y you stay calm too, okay? <laughs> And you've all taken your salatoma? Yes, sir! And nobody died? All still kicking. Compared to your curse, sir, the sickness was tiny potatoes. All right, then let's get ready to sail out. Already done, sir! We're ready whenever! <laughs> <sighs> the Pirate's Creed, huh? There's worse out there! that wasn't the real I freed. But I'm glad everyone on the ship is feeling better. Yeah. Though it sounds like they never want to touch that Salatoma stuff ever again. <laughs> what about Eleanor? She took it too. And her face went all... Wah! I don't mean how she looked. I mean how she actually feels. Oh. Well, she looks like she feels better too. Good. You're worried about her, aren't you, Velvet? No, it's nothing like that. Let me tell you something, kiddo. When young maidens ripen, they have trouble expressing their feelings. So Velvet's... ripen? Mogilu! Quit giving Loppy set confusing thoughts! <laughs> no trouble expressing those feelings, I see. is supposed to exist to bring peace and order to the world. Everything the Abbey does, everything Lord Melchior and Shepherd Artorius do, it ought to be rooted in that mission. And yet, something just doesn't feel right here. You are dismissed. That knowledge is not for you. Uh, uh... Something wrong? Whoa! Easy there. Just asking. S sorry I was just deep in thought. Is there something you need from me? Nah. Just heard a bunch of sighs and wondered if you were feeling sick or anything. 
No, I drank my Solitoma juice. Ah, tasted like crap, didn't it? It... it wasn't that bad. Hey. What? Are you afraid of demons? No, I, I am not. It's more like I... despise them. Ten years ago, a group of them attacked my village. They destroyed everything. And everyone. Including your family? Yes. The only family I had at that point was my mother. And in all the chaos, she... All I have left of her is this hand mirror she gave me. I didn't want anyone else to have to feel the way I did. And so, I became an exorcist in order to destroy demons. So you can keep your pity. Gotcha. I will then. called a pangyon, a type of bird native to this area. Pangyon. Their meat is succulent and tender, and makes a lovely stew. Wow, what's it taste like? You'd eat that poor thing? Savage. You're one to talk, demon. It was one of my mother's specialties. All right, enough of the chit-chat. Magilu, what's this grimoire friend of yours like? Hmm, well, how do I put it? <sighs> oh... You know, like that. Like what? Oh, well, to put it in a way those of meager imagination can understand. Grim's got a sort of listless, aristocratic air about her. A noblewoman in her twilight, you could say. Huh. So you mean, like, a woman, but different from Velvet and Eleanor. <laughs> You're not wrong there. I tell you what, just keep an eye out for a grown woman. A uh, grown woman. Okay, I got it. Well, since we got her name, we could start by asking around. Exactly. Now you're talking. <sighs> What's up, kiddo? Moggy Lou, you're a grown woman yourself. So why is it you have trouble clearly expressing your real feelings? Good question. Put simply, a long time ago, mine broke. Bye-bye! Your feelings broke? Come on. Let's question the townsfolk. Still no leads on that grimoire lady. Magulu, 
When did you get that letter from her you mentioned? Hmm, hard to say. It must have been last year? A decade ago? Take this seriously or I'll feed you to the sharks. Oh, what? I think I'd at least rate a Kraken. Keep this up and I swear I'll eat... It's them! The final preparations are complete. Once you've assumed your new post, everyone will act on your command. Thank you, sister. But to be honest, I worry that these shoes I'm filling might just be a bit too big for me. You need not worry. You possess a special strength and quality that others lack. Shepherd Artorius has high hopes for your deployment to Polymedes. Fear not. Just be yourself and you'll do fine. Believe you're a leader, and you will be. Yes. I'll try to make you proud, sister. They're sending him to Palamedes? Is that the name of a facility on this island? I had better get going. Safe travels. Oh, one more thing. Be careful around the demon and Haria. It's stronger than it looks. We've even had some casualties. Understood. Also, if you must drink the water, remember to boil it. Sister... <laughs> I know, I know, I worry too much. But I just can't help myself. So, there's a demon in Haria. It sounds like it's a pretty feisty one, too. If so, it may prove useful. Still, what magical timing for Oscar to show up here at the very same hour we do! <sighs> I understand your suspicion of me, but have you any proof? None, it's true. But as an exorcist, you're certainly sympathetic to the Abbey's cause. And soon you may wish we were sympathetic. Eleanor hasn't been snitching on us. I'm sure of it. And how would you know? Are you watching her even when she's taking a bath? Huh? <laughs> no, I don't. I... I always stay outside when she's taking a bath. And... Then isn't it possible she's communicating with the Abbey in secret while you're not there? You pledged to obey me until the day you die, correct? Yes, that I did. Remember, when you two trade blows, only the Abbey wins. One less demon, and one less traitor for them to worry about. While we're standing around here arguing, that demon could be attacking Grimoire! <sighs> it's true. Let's find some more people to question around town. Bienfu. Ah, a keen eye you have, young man. That is a doll of the Empyrean Amenoch. That's... Empyrean Amenoch? Yep, no doubt about it. I've seen her with my own eyes. Real dignified, but not without a bit of a temper. You saw her? Why was she angry? Well, the Abbeys banned any profession of the Amenochian faith in Southgand, despite her popularity. Gotta assume that's what got her all bent out of shape. I tried talking to her, but no matter what I said, she was just like... <sighs> <sighs> oh. Wait, that sounds like... 
And that low-energy goddess you saw? The doll you've got here looks like her? Yeah, more or less. Ha! Fortune smiles upon thee, weary adventurers. That listless goddess is none other than Grim. Grimoire isn't human? When did I ever say she was? So, shopkeep, where'd you see her? I think it was down by McClear Beach. Pensively watching the tide come in? That's her, all right. Quickly, to the beach! Ugh. Why didn't you mention Grimoire as a Moloch before now? You can't be too careful with that information. Spies, spies listening everywhere! <laughs> so what's it really like? Huh? The connection between Moloch and Vessel. Do you share, like, thoughts and feelings? Um... Sort of. When I'm dwelling inside Eleanor, I can see what she sees and hear what she hears. But I can't read her thoughts or her emotions. Sitting in a box doesn't teach you how the box feels. I see. In that case, I want to give her as little time alone as possible. Uh, I don't want to bathe with her, alright? I know. You're a boy and all. For her baths, we can send Bienfu. No, that's a bad idea. It'll have to be Mogulu. Or myself. Phew! What sort of boundaries have you and Eleanor drawn? How do you sleep? We talk before bed sometimes. But it's not like I'm sleeping by her side or anything. It's easier for me to tell when she wakes up if I'm dwelling inside her. Does she ever get out of bed at night? Not in my experience. And she sleeps so peacefully. Huh? When she's around you guys, she always looks so stern. But when she's sleeping, her expression is... Softer, you could say. She lets her hair down, too. And I think it's kind of prettier that way. Huh. So that's what he likes. Well, keep an eye on her, but... But? Watch out for the older girls. Huh? Teresa and Oscar sure seem close. I've known them since I was an initiate, but I've never seen them quarrel, not even once. Did you ever fight with your brother, Velvet? Yeah, I guess I did. Sometimes I'd chew him out, and he'd sulk and stop talking to me, but I found that adorable too. You did? No matter how much he dug in his heels, or tried to talk like he was in charge, after a while he'd be right there trailing along behind me. Like a little puppy dog. Puppies are a lot more obedient. I always had to keep an eye on him. Little brothers are odd creatures. Rokuro's a little brother. Is he adorable too? Huh? I don't think a little brother who's out to kill you is in any way adorable. But Chigure seemed like he was having fun. Sometimes you just don't make sense. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> little brothers. Do you have any siblings? I'm an only child. Well then, that's perfect. You pretend the boy is your little brother. Huh? That's a bit extreme, but actually, when I'm talking with Lafayette, sometimes I think, this is what having a brother must feel like. I could be Eleanor's brother. Don't take any of this nonsense seriously, Lafayette. Malakim are just tools to exorcists. She can never think of you as her brother. Oh... yeah... You're wrong. I've changed how I view Malakim. I know that's true because I can think of him as a brother. Right! She's all talk. Don't believe her. It seems to me like you're the one who's treating him as a tool, by forcing your own opinions upon him. Ooh! Two sisters struggling for the affections of their brother! Eeny teeny candlestick! Which one will the Muppet pick?! How about an older brother instead? Q 
beautiful waters. So this is Muckler Beach. I hope she's actually here. This grimoire who we're searching for is a Moloch like Bienfu, right? To be honest, I don't see how someone so different can be a Moloch just the same as Laffy said or Aizen. I understand your doubts. It's quite the tangly mess. I'll tell you anything! In that case, I've been wondering, what's underneath your hat? Oh no! Anything but that! So, we've hit a wall already. But that ribbon flaps around and gets in the way, right? Could I take it off for you? No! No! That's not possible! You mustn't remove the ribbon! Why not? That's another thing I can't say! It's all cans with you. Alright, is there anything you can tell me? I could talk about what type of Malakim we are, or our position in the world of Malakim, or our abilities. Oh, I'd like to know all that. Then I will tell you! Listen closely. We Norman are a well-established race of Malakim. Compared to other Malakim, we aren't as adept at manipulating natural forces, but we excel at drawing out and heightening the abilities of others. Think of them as a convenient power-up. They're also known as common spirits. Don't even say that! We Norman hate being called that! Why is it so painful for you? Because it makes people think we're average and unremarkable! That's why we work so hard to show how we're all different! That does explain your quirky speaking mannerisms. Don't sweat it. That's a perfectly common thing to worry about. <laughs> Don't say that! Is that... Grimoire? <sighs> She's moving away! A dragon? No, just a big lizard demon. Is it a dragon? <laughs> No mercy! Won't that one be Crap! <laughs> 
So she's... the same sort of Moloch as Bianfu? You're Grimoire, right? <sighs> We've been looking for you. We need your help. <sighs> Who are you? I'm Velvet. I know your witch friend. Oh... Grim, so wonderful to see you. It's been forever! Ah, you two. Still as outlandish a pair as ever, I see. How exactly do you know her? Witch training? She was an upperclassman. And? We found this fascinating ancient tome, and we were hoping you could read it for us. Goodness, Magilu. You of all people joining a team? I didn't know you had it in you. Eh, they keep me entertained. Well, I don't need entertainment. Bien! Come on, Grim! Isn't there any way you can help us? It's not the kind of thing I do. Oh, what a shame. Things happen. Well, we tried, didn't we? Maybe you need some... incentivizing. Do it. I'm serious. I bet you are. <sighs> Your eyes tell me you're dangerous. Trouble follows you like a hawk tails a rabbit. And at my age, trouble is something I'd rather avoid. How old are you? Ask me again and you'll get a firework in the tush. Uh, my apologies. It appears we've wasted our time. A walk on the beach is never wasted, but sorry. <laughs> well, how did you learn to read the ancient tongue? Are there books for studying it or something? My, my. Are you actually thinking of learning it on your own? Well, I love reading, and I want to learn more about history. Besides, we need what's in this book. You have passion, child. I'll give you that. Not to mention you want to be helpful to Velvet, don't you, kid? Yeah... My tuition isn't cheap, you know. You will teach me? No, I won't. But I admire your dedication enough to read it for you. Now where's this book? Here it is, ma'am! You needn't be so formal. Oh, uh, y yes, ma'am. Er, uh, not ma'am. Right. Let's see what we're looking at here. The language of ancient Avarost. <laughs> Had to be the hard one, of course. A lot of wear and tear, too. This'll take some time. We're in a hurry. That may well be, but this isn't the place for study. Let's move to someplace more comfortable. Hmm, you've redeemed yourself, young man. There's a village called Haria just a little ways away. That works. Thank you. Fine. Haria Village. Whatever gets the job done. Isn't that the village with that demon that Oscar and Teresa were talking about? I think it might be. We should remain on our guard. That's Haria village. To the inn! One and all! I apologize if I'm being rude, but I have to ask. You're not Amanoch the Empyrean, are you? Of course I'm not. What would even make you ask such a thing? A shop in Isolt was selling Amenoch figurines that looked just like you. Oh, that. 
I distinctly remember whispering to the shopkeeper in his sleep, telling him not to sell those things. You showing up in his dreams probably only convinced him you were the real deal! You should sue for his use of your likeness and get proper compensation from that shopkeeper! Forget it. It's no concern. Yeah, you're right. It's not like they'd ever sell anyway. Oh, you think a figurine of mine wouldn't sell? You've got this whole somber ennui thing going on. A figurine needs to be cute, like me. Then how about I turn you into a product? Me? Really? Oh yes. I'll have you stuffed and mounted. But since it'd be a unique piece, I'd have to price it a bit higher. Mounted? No, no, count me out! Oh, you're no fun. Now, what was it we were talking about? Whether or not you are the Empyrean Amenoch. Ah, yes, that's right. I'm no Empyrean, I'm just a simple girl. <sighs> it would be hard for anyone to worship an Empyrean like me, right? That's true. <clears throat> oh, uh, I mean, it just seems like you're the type who can see through anything, so... Perhaps an Empyrean seems less intimidating from a certain point of view. You're saying I'm scarier than an Empyrean? Not scarier, exactly. Just more of a savvy sort of woman. That's not a bad answer, but it won't get you out of the doghouse. Oh, <laughs> oh,